Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on special IP networking concepts. Today I'm going to be talking about the media access control address, and then I'm going to talk about the difference between collision domains and broadcast domains, and we're going to conclude with types of network transmissions. There's a whole bunch of technical information to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Let's begin the formal part of this session by discussing the media access control address. All networking interfaces come with their own special address already configured. That would be the media access control address, the MAC address. The MAC address is often referred to as the physical address or the burned in address of the interface. While MAC addresses may be changed or spoofed, most often it's set by the manufacturer and never actually changes. Now switches and other OSI Layer 2 devices rely upon that MAC address in order to get network packets to their correct destinations. The MAC address has a specific format. Actually, it has two specific formats. One is 48 bits in length, and the other is 64 bits in length, and both of them are represented by hexadecimal numbers. Both formats can be broken down into two parts. The Organizationally Unique Identifier, or OUI, and the Extended Unique Identifier, the EUI. The Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, the IEEE, assigns all electronic manufacturers their own OUI, which always makes up the first portion of the MAC address. Each manufacturer then assigns its own EUI to each device that is produced. Usually, it is the serial number of that device. Theoretically, no two interfaces will have the same MAC address. I need to mention the EUI64 format. IPv6 requires that the node address or the MAC address be in an EUI64 format. So that MAC address has to be 64 bits in length. If the EUI of the interface is only 24 bits in length, it is actually split into two parts, and 16 bits of padding are added to create the EUI64 format. Now let's discuss the difference between collision domains and broadcast domains. Before I can talk about collision domains and broadcast domains, I need to talk about carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. All Ethernet networks use this technology, also called CSMA with CD, when transmitting data. In an Ethernet network, all Ethernet devices have equal access to the network media and are capable of transmitting data at any time. This can lead to data collisions. With CSMA CD, a device listens to the carrier signal on the network media. If no other device is transmitting, the device is free to send data. If another device sends data at the same time, a collision is possible, which can corrupt the data. The devices listen for collisions. That's the collision detection part. If a collision occurs, the devices will stop transmitting and wait a random period of time before attempting to transmit again. To do this, they use what is called a back-off algorithm. With that out of the way, now let me explain what collision domains are. Collision domains are an area of the network where packets or network traffic can collide. There are some devices that break up collision domains. They can be broken up by switches, bridges, and routers, but not by hubs. On the other hand, a broadcast domain is defined as all the nodes that can be reached by a broadcast transmission. All the nodes that can be reached reside in the same network. Broadcast traffic cannot pass routers, so the domain is also defined by the subnet mask 
in that subnet mask defines the network. Here's a special note. Technically, IPv6 does not use broadcast transmissions. IPv6 replaces broadcast transmissions with multicast transmissions. And what do you know? That's a good segue for us to discuss types of network transmissions. We're going to begin this section by talking about types of IPv4 network transmissions. And first up is unicast. Unicast is a specific source address transmission going to a specific source destination address. It can be thought of as one-to-one -one communication. It's only two devices transferring data between each other. Then there's multicast transmission. This is where a specific source address transmission is going to a set of registered destination addresses. This is one to a few communication. Routers often use multicast transmissions to track their routes and to make changes to their routing tables. And finally, there are broadcast transmissions. This is where a specific source address transmission is going to all addresses on the local network. This can be considered as one to all communication because all devices on the local network are going to be able to receive this broadcast transmission. So let's move on to types of IPv6 network transmissions. And IPv6 uses unicast, just like IPv4 does. IPv6 also uses multicast, just like IPv4. Where IPv6 differs is with anycast transmission. Anycast is where a specific source address transmission is going to a specific IPv6 address that has been assigned to multiple devices. The router uses an algorithm to determine which MAC address that has that specially configured IPv6 address is closest and only that device receives the Anycast transmission. Anycast can be considered as one to the closest communication. That concludes this session on special IP networking concepts. I talked about the MAC address. I talked about the differences between a collision domain and a broadcast domain. And then I concluded with a discussion on the types of network transmission. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another one.